Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first N4A webinar of the year hosted by the Virtual Education Working Group. My name is Zach Reed and I serve as your Division Director for Educational Services and Initiatives. The Virtual Education team is led by Emily Howard and Maureen Tremblay, who along with Rachel Rodriguez and Kelsey Share, have developed this amazing event. This will be the first of many productions for the academic year, aiming to provide you with a diverse array of content topics, looking to facilitate professional development for N4A practitioners in all of your capacities. We're so grateful that you've chosen to participate today and excited to welcome our collaborators on this production. I will now turn it over to Maureen to get us started. Hi everyone, I'm Maureen Tremblay and I'm honored to serve as the Vice Chair of the Virtual Education Working Group this year. We're excited to bring you an engaging webinar that will provide you the tangible tools and resources to increase your student athlete and athletic department's initiatives related to civic engagement. During this political season, we are focused on providing nonpartisan voter education initiatives that can empower your student athletes to use their voice through voting and engagement opportunities. Today, you will learn from experts in the civic engagement space of college athletics and hear directly from current student athletes who have used their voice to encourage voter participation on their campuses. N4A is proud to partner with the team, which is a nonpartisan organization that creates programming centered around civic engagement in college athletics. Spurred from the all vote, no play movement of 2020, the team has continued this momentum into this voting cycle and offers resources, events, and engagement opportunities to inspire student athletes to become civic leaders on their teams and their campuses. To date, the team has engaged over 100,000 student athletes, coaches, and administrators. Today's session will be led by members of the team, so if questions arise during their presentation, please use the Q&A feature through the webinar to send your thoughts to our virtual education members behind the scenes. We'll be monitoring the chat throughout the webinar and we'll address your major questions at the end of the session through that Q&A feature. So without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to the team behind the team to introduce themselves and engage in a dialogue around their mission to share the importance of creating civically engaged student athletes. I'd like to in introduce Joe Kennedy, the co-founder and executive director of the team. Joe, take it away. Thank you so much, uh, Maureen. I really appreciate that. Um, a big thank you to the entire uh, N4A uh, team that we've been working with since last summer to, to have an opportunity to uh, uh, build out this partnership and really grateful uh, for, for the opportunity to have a conversation today. Uh, I'm also keenly aware on October 3rd here today that um, we've got staff from across the country that's calling into this or they're going to be watching it after uh, it's been done and, and shared as a recording. I'm very grateful. We're very grateful for your time. You all have a lot on your plates and, and you got a lot going on on your campuses. So uh, very appreciative for you to carve out some time. And, you know, as we go through this presentation, you'll see a big theme of ours is trying to to make this easy for you to have it be the easy button of how you can integrate uh, nonpartisan civic engagement into the life skills, the student athlete development and the priorities for your athletic department. Um, but beyond, uh, like I said, just grateful for the opportunity today to, to have this conversation. Um, so with that, let's let's kick off the, the, the presentation here. Um, the team, real quickly, um, I want to just mention my own uh, journey here. I feel very fortunate to be in this role as co-founder and first ever executive director of the team. Um, I come from a, a college basketball family. My dad was a Division One head coach for 33 years. My family runs the largest boys and girls basketball camps in the country, the Hoop Group. Um, I played at Northwestern. Um, playing there opened up a door for me to then spend uh, four years working for Senator Obama and then President Obama. Uh, after my four years in that world, I came back to my first love of basketball and I coached for 12 years, 11 in Division One basketball and one year on, in the NBA. So I have an experience, 11 years on campus uh, as a coach of, of kind of understanding and, 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 and what you're going to be going through uh, as athletic department staff. Um, but I also feel very fortunate since I stepped into this role uh, to build the team in 2022 um, to, to have these past experiences that I can pull together. And it really helps lead to the motivations of, of what we're trying to build and who we are. We're a nonprofit organization that creates award-winning programming and resources looking to integrate in a nonpartisan way civic engagement and voter participation in the college athletics. And we're always thinking about how can we create pathways for athletes, coaches, and administrators to become more engaged citizens? How can we create that easy button 
um, uh, to, to make this a, a, a priority within an athletic department and to have it be part of the uh, kind of the culture of that uh, student athlete experience. Uh, and so I bring my years of uh, background into this opportunity. Uh, let's talk a little bit about who you're going to be hearing from today. Uh, You've, you've got my background. Um, let me uh, also uh, have Stephanie um, King, who is uh, the Senior Director of Strategic Initiatives at All In, and they are an amazing, amazing partners of ours at the team and really the uh, an expert in when it comes to the voter engagement space on college campuses across the country. Um, and so with that, I want to turn it over to Stephanie so she can introduce herself. Of course. Thank you so much, Joe. And again, want to echo Joe's sentiments for the gratitude of you all tuning in either live now or in the future as you watch the recording. I'm Stephanie King, and I serve as the Senior Director of Strategic Initiatives with the All-In Campus Democracy Challenge at Civic Nation. And a core part of my portfolio is supporting voter mobilization as well as athletic conference engagement. And with that, I'll turn the floor back over to Joe. Thank you, Stephanie. We'll be hearing more later about All In's um, terrific resources and some of the tools they've built that we utilize at the team. I believe Adrian Evans is also here uh, from our team behind the team. Um, Adrian, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, yes. Um, I don't believe I have uh, video access right now, but um, hi, everyone. My name is Adrian Evans. I'm the digital content manager for the team. Um, I Oh, here we go. Um, hello again. Um, like I said, I'm Adrian. I'm the digital content manager for the team. Um, I graduated from Penn this year in May, um, where I played women's soccer. So I'm very familiar um, with the student athlete lifestyle, as well as um, working towards ways to integrate digital content and social media with civic engagement. And you'll hear from me later a little bit more about that. Thank you, Adrian. Um, and Jess, who was going to join us, um, uh, could not join us today with the, the Rosh Hashanah and the Jewish holiday, but she is someone who, who was in student athlete development work at Princeton um, and has years of experience of being in athletic departments as well. So grateful to have Jess's uh, uh, support and, and help within our team uh, to, to build out our program. Uh, let's talk a little more about the, the team, our, our kind of our mission, our vision, our, our, our theory of change. Our vision, when we decided to build this organization after we began as this movement in 2020 of all vote, no play, you know, that, that vision has stayed consistent, right? We want to strive for a future where all student athletes are active participants in our democracy and all athletic departments, teams and coaches establish civic engagement as a priority. That's what we're building towards on a daily basis. And at the heart of everything we do, is this mission around how do we develop great teammates, how do we inspire leaders, and how do we empower citizens to create the future they want. So we're always thinking about that. And I think one thing we bring to the table is how can we make civic engagement joyful and easy? At the same time, right, and this is always a good hook for those coaches out there that you're going to be talking to, is like how can you use these um, resources, use these conversations, use these civic moments to try to create a stronger a team and a stronger community, right? So this can lean into different spaces. At the heart of our theory of change of what we're building is that we know there are some unbelievably passionate people in the college athletic space um, that, that are really uh, uh, care about this work. We know there's some great organizations on campuses or across the country doing civic engagement work. How can the team be a bridge to pull these worlds together um, on an annual basis. This is not something we do every two or four years with an election, but we're doing it every day, 12 months out of the year. So how can we build these bridges and support that long-term partnerships on campuses and long-term partnerships across different organizations uh, nationwide, like N4A and the team, like the team and all in. We think building that bridge and building out uh, those partnerships is really critical. One thing, thing I think makes us really unique is we're constantly thinking about as we build and design program and resources, we want to design for and with student athletes. Uh, so we have student athletes that work for us. We have student athletes, the former student athletes that work for us, former coaches. We, we're constantly thinking about that's our audience, the student athletes on campuses. How do we support them? How can we build for them, but also with them. They're constantly part of our journey of, of development. I'm 41 years old now. I'm a few years past my time as a player at Northwestern. So having that uh, a level of uh, input on the ground is really critical as we're building out program uh, on a daily and weekly basis. 
are four programs that we're focused on this year and moving forward. I'm just going to touch on them real quickly here because we're going to have an opportunity to get a little more in depth uh, in a minute. Um, you'll see as you go on our website and you look at our programs, you'll see on some of the communications we've shared uh, alluding to these four programs. They all support each other as we build out our work as the team. Um, our high impact civic events. For us at the team, it's an opportunity every fall to highlight these key civic moments. National Voter Registration Day, uh, what we're doing next week with our all-star virtual meeting on, on October 8th, all vote, no play day, right? The opportunity to support um, uh, teams and departments across the country with all vote, no play day. So we build out some programmatic structure and resources um, to support those high impact civic moments, those civic events. Uh, secondly, is our Coaches Voter Engagement Pledge. And I'll let Stephanie uh, dive into that because they've been uh, an amazing partner and leading force behind that uh, program since 2020 with, with great impact across the country. Our Civic Captain Initiative is a new program we're rolling out this fall. We're actively doing it right now. We've got 27 student athletes from across the country uh, in four key states that are helping to um, be organizers on their campus. We, we recruit them, we train them, we give them resources. How can they lean into their platforms, lean into the roles? Many of them are SAC members to try and support nonpartisan voter registration on their campus. And so we really wanted to launch kind of a specific program where we work closely with student athletes to develop um, voter registration opportunities and then ultimately voter education and then ultimately messaging around making sure they, they cast a ballot, uh, whether that's voting early or on election day or by mail. And the last program that we'll dive into a little bit later as well is our Engaged Athlete Fellowship. This is a year long civic leadership program. We had 25 athletes in year one of the program. This past year, we had 222 applications and we chose 39 uh, student athletes to be in the year two of this program. This is a nine month program really focused on civic leadership uh, on their campuses. So a couple important dates I'm gonna mention now, we're gonna mention again at the end. So we're coming up next week on National Voter Education Week. Great opportunity to engage uh, uh, campuses to engage the athletic department around really developing uh, a plan to cast your ballot, checking your registration, making sure everything's lined up with your address and your polling location, researching your ballot, um, and then ultimately thinking about, okay, well, how am I going to cast a ballot depending on the state that I'm going to be voting? Secondly, and, and we, I know we always stay on our athletes about not using their phones during meetings, uh, 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 but I think right now, Take out your phone, go to this QR code. It's an opportunity to sign up individually for our uh, all-star meeting that's happening on October 8th. Uh, this is an opportunity where we're gonna have 122 watch parties across the country. I'm sure of many of the campuses of, of folks that are on the call now. Um, and we're gonna hear from some great uh, sports uh, icons uh, like NECA and like Natasha talking about what it means to use their platform as an athlete uh, to get off the sideline and get in the game of democracy. So if you scan that QR code now, give you an opportunity to sign up individually to watch the Zoom call. And we'll also share more of that uh, on the uh, end as well. Uh, vote early day, October 29th, election hero day, November 4th, and then election day, all vote, no play day, November 5th. So write these key dates down because they are uh, coming up here quickly. To support these key moments at the team, if you go to our website, theteam.org, we have a resource tab. When you drop that down, we've really got four main resources in there that we have built um, to be uh, helpful to uh, athletic departments and from teams and for individual coaches and athletes across the country. We have a voter registration portal that is supported by All In, so we're going to hear more about that. It's a great tool to go through, check your status, update your status, or get guided uh, to be registered for the first time uh, in your state. Um, and, and, and this is a really helpful tool that you will drive you to the right resources for your state, right? Across the country, we don't have one system for voting, right? We've got each state has their own deadlines and processes. So this is a great tool to kind of push you to the right resources for your state to make sure that you are registered uh, and, and, and you understand how to cast a ballot in that state because it's state specific. Our voter guide. We build out a month-by-month -month guide, August to November, with really easy step-by-step -step ways to engage. Um, we link to great partners um, uh, with their resources. We share out some of our own great resources, like our social media toolkit, which 
Adrian will talk about it here in a second. So I think that's a really valuable tool to go month by month on how you can try to support your student athletes, coaches in the department around civic engagement every year. Third, we have got our civic drills database. I'm a former coach, love drills. So we put in here some easy ways. It could be for two minutes, could be for 20 minutes, could be for an hour. Um, different ways through our civic drills database and our video library are two really good tools that you can take advantage of that if, hey, if someone's looking for a two minute video, they wanna hear from Stephen Curry and we've got some questions afterwards about how to become a more engaged athlete, that's, a, that's an easy, uh, a quick way um, to, to maybe have a civic engagement conversation with a student athlete or a team. Or you want to go a little more in depth. You want to watch a, a, a video that is a documentary about X, Y, or Z. We have kind of pulled together all these great resources through our video library and our civic drills database. Continue to think through our resources. Um, next, we will go to our social media toolkit. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Adrian Evans, who's going to take a minute here to kind of walk through what we have put and tried to develop into that toolkit. Thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, so social media, as many of us know, one of the best ways to reach student athletes to get them the information that they need is via social media. And so here at the team, we wanted to make this as easy and simple as possible. And with that, we created our social media toolkit. And so once you go to the link below or visit our website, you'll be able to find example templates and posts that you can very, very easily access and use for your um, for promoting events on your campus, um, for sharing with your school's SAC teams, just so that they're able to promote whatever initiatives that they are um, carrying out on campus. And we even have a few posting dates to, uh, to serve as a guide. So if you're thinking, let's post about civic engagement in the months of October and November, we have some key dates already listed here that are great moments for you to be able to share um, with your athletic department teams, um, SAC, as I mentioned, with all of their respective social media pages. We also have um, a link that takes you to our logos um, and a few helpful reminders about staying nonpartisan. Um, I don't believe I'm missing anything, but yeah, social media toolkit is a very helpful um, guide and I highly recommend checking it out. Thank you, Adrian. Really appreciate your help with that. And again, I think a great, a great tool. We're trying to make it easy um, for everybody to, to utilize. Um, thinking about the next slide, you know, all vote, no play was uh, at the heart of how this movement started, right? So it started in 2020. Uh, with D1SAC, working with the NCAA to get legislation passed. Um, since then, now four years later, that legislation has been tweaked, right? So if you're a Division I program, the, the legislation leads towards on election day or 15 days prior, you should have an off day for games and practices and on day for civic engagement, right? Using one of those off days for there to be a moment of engagement, not just about voting, but it's about civic engagement every year developing those civic habits, developing those civic muscles. Division two rule is on election day uh, should be an, an off day from games and practices and on day for civic engagement. Division three has an opportunity to, to, to kind of make their own decision within the department uh, ar around those opportunities. I just want to say this real quickly. What we have tried to do and will continue to do is pull together great examples of Departments and teams maximizing this day, whether that's having a table in the athletic department for uh, reminding people to go out and, and cast their ballots or an opportunity to pass out of uh, uh, civic engagement information. Uh, we've had a lot of places host panels, right? Bring in former athletes, bring in alums to have a conversation about what it means to be an engaged athlete, hearing from someone that used to sit into their shoes. A lot of times this is a conversation that's going to get back maybe to the local level, not so much talking about the presidential a, a ballot, but thinking about how uh, the mayor's race, the attorney general, other opportunities within the, the city or community that they're from, uh, they can have an, a, a, the ability to affect change and participate directly at the local level. Um, so we've got some great examples on our website. We'll link to it, ways to maximize uh, this all vote, no play day. You can also reach out directly to the team to help support your department in thinking about that. We're here to be a thought partner in, in, in that way. 
I want to bring in Stephanie here from All In um, Campus Democracy Challenge. We partner with them on multiple programs. You go through our website. We link to their resources in a ton of places. They are just an amazing organization that works with a ton of campuses nationwide. And I want to make sure they have a chance to talk through some of their uh, great resources as well. Of course. Thank you so much, Joe. Uh, a little bit about All In and our partnership with the team is that All In is a nonpartisan entity that works with colleges and universities across the nation to help them institutionalize nonpartisan democratic engagement with a focus on civil civic learning, political participation, and student voter engagement. While we work with right now about 1,075 campuses across the nation, we also specifically work with 15 um, athletic conferences to ensure that there's continuity in the work that happens um, across your campuses. One of the things that we're really gonna talk about today to contribute to the conversation is our tool known as allintovote.org. Allintovote.org was developed in 2018 as a way to help systematize that students and individuals alike have to go through multiple processes to navigate what does it mean to vote what does it mean to participate in our democracy as in they go for one location to find their polling site they go to another location to figure out how to register to vote they go to another location to request their absentee ballot and as college students and college athletes they have the choice if they vote at their institutional address or if they vote at their home address and so it can get even more complicated as you try and have conversations across teams knowing that all of your students might be coming from a different location and so we work to ensure that we can make this process as easy as possible and then continually bring in our thought partners like the team our athletic conference personnel and then the coaches pledge um, signatories which we'll talk about in just a moment but right now, as Joe had mentioned, we'd like everyone to take out their phone. You can take 30 seconds here and scan the QR code that's on your screen and start the process to register to vote if you haven't already done so, specifically if you want to engage in the elections for this upcoming fall. Um, in particular, this will walk you through an intake form, which we have set up with the team known as the team's voting portal, as Joe had mentioned earlier on. And this will help us to better understand what election information you need to ensure that you're able to show up and vote this year. So it'll walk you through what candidates will be on your ballot after you register. It'll walk you through early voting processes, vote by mail processes, et cetera, and all in a nonpartisan capacity. So you're not being directed on like, which political party should I register with or who should I vote for, but instead it's really just kind of walking you through all of your options. So with the next couple slides, we're just gonna have a few more QR codes that you can scan at any point in time. The first of which is the Pledge to Vote program. So beyond registration, we know that young people have a lower propensity to turn out to vote. In 2020 was the first time that the college voting age, in particular student athletes as part of that, met the national um, aggregate of individuals participating in the electoral process. And then in 2022, we saw a big decrease in college students showing up to vote, and that's also inclusive of college athletes. And so we wanna make sure that we take every step possible to ensure that not only do people register to vote, but they take the time to turn out to vote and understand what does that commitment look like? So that's what the Pledge to Vote does. Um, and then on the next thing, we wanna make sure that folks, if you've registered, you also wanna take a few seconds and just check your registration. Um, if you're like, I registered last year, or I voted in the primaries, or I think I registered, it's always a good chance that you might want to um, make sure that you're up to date on all of your information. And again, checking your registration only takes a few seconds to ensure that you are ready to go um, in advance of November 5th and how you're choosing to vote. On the next slide, we also know that many students will be in games, contests, tournaments, play, or on break and might not be able to make it to a polling location on election day. And several states give the option for students and student athletes to request a ballot to vote by mail or to vote absentee. And again, it takes a few moments and every state is different on what that process looks like, but this one stop shop will make will help you walk through what does it mean to request a ballot if your state allows you to vote by mail um, in the forthcoming elections. The next thing we'll talk about is researching your ballot. Too often young people are unaware of all the things that are going to be on their ballot. Sometimes there's the false assumption that it's just the president and the vice president. What else could they be? And then individuals get to the polling booths and they're like, oh gosh, my ballot is double-sided and I'm unclear what these people do. And so we highly encourage that individuals take a moment to research their ballot and to understand what the candidates' stances are on particular issues so that they can better align based on their values on who they might wanna vote for and in which positions. The last thing is that we also wanna make sure that folks are aware of how to find their polling location. 
especially as redistricting continues to happen across the continental US, where you voted in the spring or where you voted last fall might not be the same location that you're expected to turn out this November. And so we wanna make sure that everyone is aware of where their polling location is, so that they're showing up in the appropriate places and not being inconvenienced on election day. So always take a few moments to make your full plan and go through the QR codes that were previously displayed. So you can research your ballot, check your registration, make the commitment to turn out, and then of course, to find your polling location. And now more tangential to this conversation, I wanna talk about the coaches pledge, which came out of the all vote no play day, which Joe referenced early on, which really helps to hold some accountability to our athletic personnel to ensure that they're providing space for their student athletes to register to vote during team meetings, team conversations, or other like spaces. So their student athletes have conversations with mentors like their coaches to ensure that they're ready to go during election season. The impetus behind the all vote no play day was really driven by then um, assistant coach at Georgia Tech University, now at Stanford University, Eric Reveno, to make a stance that student athletes should have the ability to turn out to vote on election day and that they all should have a plan and support in order to do so. With his leadership, I think it was a simple tweet that sparked this movement. It has allowed for the D1 SAC during the 2020 election cycle to put forward legislation with the NCAA called All Vote No Play Day or Civic Engagement Legislation, which gave all D1 conferences the day off on that first Tuesday to ensure that their student athletes could turn out to vote um, in November. Since then, that D1 civic engagement legislation has transitioned so that it does give 15 days pre or post election day, as many student athletes were choosing to either vote early based on their state um, legislation practices or to vote by mail. And so then they were finding they weren't sure what to do on that Tuesday. So there's some wiggle room there. Following suit though, there was also the D2 legislation that passed, which means that they do have election day off that first Tuesday in November, again, to align with civic engagement efforts. And then D3 conferences and NAIA conferences are able to do as they need to, to support their student athletes and no formal legislation has come forward. But again, signing the coaches pledge, which is a partnership with all in the team, the WBCA and the NABCA, NABC, excuse me, is one way for athletic personnel to hold themselves accountable that they'll give the space to their student athletes to register to vote. When a coach signs a pledge, they also get support from all in the team, NABC and WBCA, by way of a social media toolkit. They get a playbook which walks through all the things they can and can't do as administrators supporting their student athletes with voting, important dates and how to's, as well as examples of ways that they can support their student athletes at large. So they're making the commitment and then also receiving the support to follow through. So lots of things happening. And now with that, I want to turn it back to Joe so we can talk about the fellowship program. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, you know, there's a lot going on between now and November 5th, and that's why I thought it was really important to harp on those uh, resources and the partnership with All In. Um, you know, as Stephanie mentioned, you know, the, the team has built on that movement from All Vote, No Play Day and what started in 2020 with Eric Reveno, uh, who was then at Georgia Tech, with Lisa K. Solomon, who's a professor at Stanford. And it's really important as we were building out the ideas of how that movement would become an organization, that the organization did work 12 months out of the year. And so one of the concepts that came from that was wanting to develop a year-long civic leadership program where we, we could engage dozens of athletes across the country in a more in-depth way. A lot of our work provides scale and breadth, and we can work with hundreds of thousands of athletes and coaches and, and administrators and partners, but we also wanted to have a way to kind of go in depth with a specific cohort of student athletes to support them in developing those skills. And that's what we did in launching our leadership program, the Engage Athlete Fellowship. Last year was year one. This is the picture of that first cohort. They were an amazing group. Um, in addition to leadership and civic training, um, they each did an impact project on their campuses, which was really wonderful to see at a macro level, these 25 projects happening across the country. And then we brought all of them to Washington, D.C. for a three and a half day civic experience there where they could bring together what we did virtually and now have an opportunity to be together in person. This year's class is 39 uh, fellows across the country, Division One, Two, Three. Uh, and NAIA and community college. So thrilled to have a really diverse uh, group. Um, one thing I really wanna make sure I highlight about this fellowship and as we will be doing our uh, applications next spring for what would then be the third year of the fellowship. Um, and I think one of the things we learned in the first year was really the highlight of the journey, the nine month journey was our trip to DC. We had a really, really uh, impactful and powerful 
uh, experience uh, with these 25 student athletes. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Adrian Evans who can take a, a minute to talk about our DC experience. Yeah, as Joe mentioned, the um, DC trip, which essentially was the culmination of the Engaged Athlete Fellowship, um, was a truly incredible experience. Um, it had a little bit of everything from visiting the White House and getting to go bowling to our inaugural Engaged Athlete Forum, which took place at the Micro Microsoft Innovation and Policy Center, um, where the fellows as well as guests were able to hear from leaders across the civics, business, um, and sports worlds, um, which was just a great opportunity to hear insights from them, people at the top of their game, um, incorporating civics into their work. Um, and then lastly, we're able to, you know, visit government buildings. We had to got to meet with Senator Cory Booker, um, as well as got to participate in fun activities like going to a Washington Nationals game. Um, so overall, really awesome experience and a great highlight for all the fellows um, at the end of their at the end of their journeys. Thank you, Adrian. I know everyone enjoyed getting a chance to bowl in the White House um, and, and also just build some, some, some team and some camaraderie from that experience. Um, we'll share out afterwards this deck, but there's two slides on here that I'll just touch on real briefly, which is just kind of some of the quotes and experience of athletes that we've worked with. Here's Anna from Houston Women's Golf. And on the next slide is uh, Chase Griffin uh, from UCLA as a quarterback. And I think the biggest Thing to take away when you read through these is just, you know, we're, we're supporting these student athletes to use their platform and develop these skills, develop their civic habits. And they really, I think, value that support uh, to lean into this space and to really think about being a champion off the court or off the field. And in a minute here, we're going to have a conversation with our other three athletes as well that are part of our fellowship program. But I want to leave you with this before we get to our panel. Just a reminder. Um, Take out that phone, sign up for October 8th All-Star Meeting. We'd love to have you join on that. And that is open to as many people as possible that want to join that meeting. In our follow-up email, we've got our voter guide link. We've got the link to the 2024 Coaches Pledge that Stephanie did a great job uh, talking through. And then we've got our All Into Vote tool that we link to on our website, but we're also going to share the link to that there as a great uh, resource when it comes to voter uh, education, voter information. And I can't stress enough, Stephanie said it, it's really important for everybody, everyone on this call, plus the athletes at, at your institution, check your status. You think you're registered, you want to just double check it. Do I have the right address? Do I know exactly where I'm going for my polling location? So I can't stress enough the value add of checking your status. And we've got these key uh, upcoming dates that are coming. So I am really, really uh, uh, want to just say thank you again um, to uh, N4A for uh, building out this, this partnership in year one of it, um, and really excited about how we continue to work together to achieve that vision of where student athletes are active participants in our democracy, and all athletic departments, teams, and coaches establish civic engagement as a priority. And I'm, again, very appreciative of everyone carving out time out of their busy schedules to think about uh, uh, civics, to think about how they support the student athletes. We're here to, hit, to have it be hit the easy button. Uh, and that's something that's really important to us. So with that, I'm going to, we're going to transition here to a conversation um, with three of our student athletes that were in our fellowship program, uh, Sammy, Isaiah, and Inez. So with that, let's see if we can pull them up and if they can unmute. Awesome. Great to see you, Inez. Good to see you. What's up, Isaiah? Sammy? You Sammy, you're there. Yep. How's it going? Good, good, good. Having a little trouble seeing you, but I know you're, I can hear you. I can see you're there. Um, awesome. Well, let's first start with just some quick intros. Why don't you guys go around the horn here? We'll do name, sport, school, and where you're from. Um, so, Inez, why don't you uh, kick us off, then we'll go Isaiah and then Sammy. Yeah, hi, everyone. My name is Inez Johnson, and I am a senior at Bates College, which is located in Lewiston, Maine, where I run cross country and track and field, and I'm from Dallas, Texas. Hi, my name is Isaiah Taylor. I'm a senior here at Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts, and I'm a men's basketball player, and I'm from McGowan, Mass. I think you guys can see me a little better. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, I'm Sammy Osmani. I am a Crane basketball player. 
um, and I'm from Oaklawn, Illinois. Well, I, I am very, uh, very fortunate to get to know all three of them through the first year of our Engaged Athlete Fellowship. They were part of this first cohort, um, and each of them did a, a, a great job of engaging their campuses and their communities through the first year of that program, but also just having a passion for civics on their campuses. So I would love to we have a little bit of a Q&A here with them. And um, let's start with this, I, I think, and Inez, I'll start with you again, and we'll kind of keep keep the same order here. Um, just real quickly, kind of your experience in the fellowship program last year and the project you worked on. Why don't you give everyone just kind of a quick rundown of, of how that experience was of the program and how it's kind of connected to the impact project you did at Bates? Sure. Well, I am so grateful to have been part of the inaugural fellowship for the team. It was truly just like a wonderful experience, both in feeling supported and having a bunch of connections to support um, civic engagement on my campus and with athletics, but then also meeting fellow student athletes who were pursuing um, this higher goal of civic engagement on their campuses and hearing all the different ways that they were doing that. So my project was emphasizing the kind of two sides of civic engagement and community engagement that combine to make people feel like they are um, engaged parts of their community. And in doing previous work to activate civic engagement and voter registration, education and engagement on my campus, I had really emphasized the power of athletics. I go to a small division three school where a lot of students are athletes. So um, working with teams to identify vote captains and develop programming around that was uh, a, you know, an opportunity that I'd really enjoyed. And then what I'd found was that most students who were kind of deciding if they wanted to vote or not, were like, well, I don't feel particularly connected to my community, you know, what's the point of it? And that question was the driving force for me to think, okay, well, people need to be feeling more connected to their communities. So then I partnered with our Harvard Center for Community Partnerships to help match teams with um, relevant community engaged programming so they would be able to get out into um, the town of Lewiston in our greater community and then feel like the real life impact of, you know, what it means to live here and how their vote might matter, whether that's you know for school board funding or for the representation we get in Congress um, to deliver infrastructure here. Thank you, Inez. Isaiah, how about uh, your work and your experience? Um, I had a great experience with uh, Engaged Athlete Fellowship. Um, definitely going to DC, meeting a lot of leaders in business, sports, civics, all that type of stuff. Um, but for my project, I held a free basketball clinic and my entire goal was to just inspire, mentor, and provide a safe space where athletes could just have fun and, and envision a, a bigger future outside of the city of Worcester. Um, so basketball, it's always been a, a big thing to me. It got me out of my hometown. It showed me places all up and down the United States and, uh, <laughs> sorry, I had maybe five or six of my teammates come help volunteer with me. And um, it was just a really good experience. It was great. It's K through eight. So it was a very um, diverse um, body of, of attendees. And just seeing that everyone was so fascinated and engaged with us just to play basketball and ask questions it was um, extremely fun. Great. And Sammy, what about your uh, your work and experience? Sammy, just unmute yourself there. Yeah, so it was a great experience. Just to start off, the drafting part of the whole uh, project idea was uh, pretty intricate. You had to find out what how you wanted to expend your budget, um, how you wanted to organize it, who do you have to uh, talk to to reserve uh, areas on campus. Uh, for me particularly, I did table talks, which I did in different phases. Uh, the first phase was reaching out to student athletes directly uh, by creating a handout with uh, several different QR codes. Stephanie did a great job of explaining what all into vote dot uh, org was and all their great resources. And I kind of used all into vote uh, and their links to make sure that I had everything on the handout that was necessary for voter registration information. If you're out of state and you want to have a, in a mail in ballot and all those good things. So I created a little bit of a little handout, reached out to all the sports teams and said, hey, are you guys registered to vote? Uh, my initial goal was to get everybody on my team to register to vote, which I did, and I was really happy about. And then the second phase was setting up shop uh, in different parts of campus um, where there was a lot of foot traffic, 
And uh, I made sure to set up shop, had a table talk there, had pizza, donuts. I mean, then I was lucky enough to get uh, some swag from the team, whether that's T-shirts, uh, stickers and whatnot, uh, to set up the table and ask, you know, regular students, student athletes, whoever wanted to come to the table. Hey, are you registered to vote? What kind of information do you need? How can I help you? Uh, look at these handouts that I have. Check if you register real quick. It'll take two seconds. If you don't have time right now, take a photo of it. And then the third phase, I also did the same thing, but instead of setting up shop, I walked around campus so that I could reach more people um, because it was kind of finals week and everyone was doing their own thing. So I walked around campus and uh, did kind of the same thing as phase two, but try to engage with more people. So it was a great experience overall. And uh, actually this, this fall, we kind of did something similar to that. I don't know if you're gonna ask a question about how we've continued to do that, but yeah, it's, it's super cool. It was a great experience. Love it. Thank you, Sammy. That that's great, and and I, I will use that as a good segue. I'll circle back to Inez here, though. But yeah, let's think about we've got an election in a month, right? Um, what are your thoughts on uh, what you might be doing on your campus, or some of the work you've seen maybe by other student athletes or other organizations on campus? But you know, you went through this fellowship program. Now you're continuing to be a civic leader on your campus. Kind of just some of those. Uh, thoughts or ideas here that you've been doing or what you are going to be doing or you've seen here uh, upcoming in the next month? Sure. So yeah, it's 33 days until election day. Very exciting. And the energy is definitely palpable here on Bates campus. I have worked um, as a chair of the Bates Votes Initiative, which is our nonpartisan student voter initiative at the past three years at Bates. And this is definitely the biggest election with which I have supported because it is a general election with presidents on the ballot. So very exciting things happening. Things that we've been up to, uh, we had National Voter Registration Day a couple of weeks ago and we were tabling from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I was out there for 10 of those hours, which was really exciting. Just asking people the appropriate questions. Are you registered to vote? Is your voter registration up to date? Um, do you know where you're going to vote? Do you know your polling place? Do you have a plan to vote? What day are you going to vote? Um, whether that's voting early or voting on election day, we have a master document that we've used um, in partnership with All In to develop. Um, that has all the absentee ballot information for every single state um, for students who want to vote in their home state versus in Maine. And that has been ongoing. We're doing different events. I'm planning a Rock the Vote event with in collaboration with our Bates Musicians Union, which has a lot of student athletes in it. We've got some really multi-talented people here at Bates and people will be showing up to listen to some music, check what's on the ballot and make their vote plan, um, which I'm really excited about. That's a lot, a lot of great work uh, uh, up there, up there for me, uh, uh, Inez. And yeah, keep keep it up. I know, I know you're doing a lot of important stuff, um, Isaiah. Um, so actually, I've had a basically complete 360 since DC. I can say it now because it's no longer true. But prior to the team, I didn't really care for what it was like all that stuff. But just being in, involved in those conversations completely flipped my mind so um I actually I, I spoke with our SAC and I presented just like a one little slide and I had a QR code that was um tied to vote.gov and it directly took uh, all the students that were present at the SAC meeting to a voter registration page where they could um register to vote within their state and I also um I tied it in with a, a thing called Cougar Chaos so it's a point system based thing it's year long and everybody um, you just get points for being engaged on and off campus. So um, that it really, I think 100% of the people who are attending that meeting um, registered to vote. And then I've also, um, I had Tom Hicks, who I met down in DC, who's a school alum and commissioner at the EAC. He spoke with our team and just shared a little bit about his work. So I've done some of that stuff since leaving DC. That's great. Well, it's wonderful to hear the, the what you took from the experience has allowed you to stay engaged and passionate and and, and to think about new ways to lead. So that, that's great yeah, work. Definitely. Uh, Sammy, I know you're you're passionate about voter reg and, and and what do you all have going on there in uh, Blue Jay country? Yeah. So funny enough, after the LinkedIn post of our Washington D.C. trip, um, I said I wanted to continue, uh, you know, getting students registered to vote on campus. And, uh, you know, professors reached out to me and said, hey, Sammy, we love what you're doing with the team. Um, why not come to our freshman advisories and come speak about voter registration? 
And one in particular, a, web, a professor in particular, who I've you know developed a great relationship over the years, was like, "Hey, come over and you know talk about for, talk about talk about the team and what you do for five to ten minutes." Um, and then talk about voter registration. And then it ended up being a 30 to 40 minute conversation of, of a Q&A where it wasn't only just about, you know, uh, voter registration and whatnot, but it was also about being a student ath athlete and balancing academics and, um, you know, the difficulties and challenges that you'll face as a college student. Keep in mind, these uh, freshmen have been only on campus for two to three weeks. So they're kind of antsy, kind of nervous, don't really know what's going on yet. So uh, I think something to emphasize is that it's not only about, you know, voter registration and civil engagement, you know, the synergy behind it is like, you know, you could bring in all the other things, uh, advice, the mentors, we saw, you know, Isaiah saw himself and Inez about all the people that are willing to help us, all the mentors we saw at Washington DC that were so willing to give us advice about the next steps after we're athletes and how to, you know, position ourselves um, in, in various careers that we want to uh, achieve and whatnot. So that's super important. Um, and then another thing I would like to mention is that like the athletic department, we never had something for like voter registration and um, getting people to vote and whatnot. But now, now with, you know, me, Destiny, who is a women's volleyball player who was also part of the team and Josh Townley Thomas, um, a new member of the team, we have this kind of community where we get to work together with SAC to do things like October 8th, the pizza to the polls event, um, and collaborate with them. We expect 40 to 50 individuals to show up to that. So that's super cool. Um, so yeah, it's just the synergy behind it. Um, the things that you get out of it, the extra, the extra extrinsic values behind it. Not only you get to register to vote, but you get to speak to freshmen, you get to tell them, give them uh, various advice, uh, tell them about their classes, how to balance things. So there's so many different things that come out with this, you know, the team and being a part of a nonpartisan thing like this. Thanks, Sammy. No, I think it's, it's a great example of building that bridge, right? And we want that bridge to last every year on your campus. You guys are going to leave a legacy on your three campuses, uh, and we want that to continue. Um, I think the last question before we bring it in for, for some additional Q&A from, from the audience, and, and Inez, we'll go back to you. Um, if you could give any advice to the staff on this call about how to approach student athletes regarding nonpartisan civic engagement, what would that advice be? Sure. Great question. So I answered a similar question two weeks ago when I gave a presentation to the all all coach meeting um, for my school's athletic department. And my answer would be framing. It's essentially this idea that democracy is the biggest team sport we have in the United States. It's got um, some 300 million people who are involved in it. So in voting and being civically engaged and knowing what's on your ballot, knowing for whom you're voting, for what you're voting and how that matters. I think that's a really direct translation of the values that are harnessed and developed as student athletes on a team. Um, the idea of a common goal of common principle um, and believing in something larger than yourself. That's what makes for successful teams. That's what makes for successful athletes. And that's what makes for a successful thriving democracy. So participation and believing in what you're doing is everything and translating that to your athletes, I think is pretty easy because they already believe in their sport and it's connecting that principle to the wider world in which they live. That's great, great stuff, right? It's the big, the biggest team sport in the country uh, is democracy. Uh, Isaiah, what about you? What would, what would the advice be? Yeah, I'll just piggyback off of Inez because I feel like that's as good of an answer as you can give. But I feel like a lot of student athletes, they just don't know a lot about this stuff. So if you just find a way to make it engaging in a learning experience, you're definitely going to receive like a very good feedback on it. For sure. And again, one thing I think through the resources we've tried to build out as well is like it can be a quick hit. Right? It doesn't have to be. Uh, I love that we've got everyone's attention for an hour today. Right. But like working with the team, working with an athlete, working with your sack, it can be in short bursts because the passion and the energy is there. It's sometimes just giving it a little bit of guidance or a little bit of a, of a nudge. So we always have that in mind that athletes, staff, and coaches all have limited time. So how can we make this engaging and easy? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Sam. <laughs> I would, you know, piggyback off that a little bit is, um, you know, faculty members and universities, I feel like are more than willing to accept these kind of um organizations like the team, events like table talks and whatnot. Um, there's just nothing, there's, you know, for example, I create in my personal experiences, there wasn't anything like that 
uh, here just yet. So they didn't know how to organize it, where to allocate those resources. But once uh, Destiny, Josh and I, you know, came up with these kind of projects and said, hey, this is this is a necessity on campus. And it's really important for our student athletes and student body to be a uh, be involved, be, you know, fulfill our civic duties. Then they were more than willing to help. Um, for example, our athletic director, you know, was all in on it. Marcus Blossom was, uh, I don't, I'm sure a great friend of Joe's, uh, was, I was like, hey, I, I need some pizza. I need some donuts. I'm doing these table talks. And he's like, you know what? Don't worry about it. We will take it. Uh, we will cover it all. So me personally, I didn't have to use a single cent of uh, the team's budget because the athletic director and the athletic department was so willing to help. So just a matter of being open-minded. And if students have these great ideas where they want to, uh, you know, set up table talks or boost voter registration on campus, then you guys should be more than willing to help them because these are great ideas. And I feel like it's, uh, you know, had a positive impact on Crane's campus. That's great stuff, Sammy. Um, I, I want to right now have an opportunity if uh, there's any other, uh, I think Kelsey is going to help here with any kind of Q&A if there's any other questions that came up from uh, the crowd. Great job, everybody. Um, they've got a few questions in the chat. We'd love to ask you. Um, and I think some of you have hit on some of this information already, but um, thinking about all the administrators on this call, what do you think are you know the top ways that administrators can best support you all as student athletes? Question number one. I'll let the athletes jump in on this one. Well, I could, I could kind of take that. I mean, I... I think I kind of gave the example of the athletic director being so open-minded and willing to help me with my project. Um, I think if you guys just listen out, hear out the student athletes, if they have a particular project they want to um, create on campus, then, you know, I think it would be a major help if the athletic department could help reserve spaces and provide funding for food or gear or whatnot, because I think it's super important to, you know, be able to, you know, bridge that connection between faculty members and students. Appreciate that. Thanks, Sammy. Um, let's see. Next question. Um, how do you think that you all can spark interest in voting initiatives with SAC leaders if they've been traditionally, you know, civically unengaged? Any ideas there? Can you repeat that question, please? So how do you how do you all think you can get SAC or other student athlete leaders more engaged if historically they haven't been engaged? That's a really good question. I can take that. So a uh, couple different ways. I think a lot of things are relational. So if you have a connection to a member of a team, um, if you know that that person has not been historically engaged or you know that that person has the potential for being engaged but their team might not be the most, finding that foray in I think is the first thing because it's just getting your foot in the door and saying, okay, civic engagement, it's around. How can we get you involved in it? How can we get you interested? So there's that aspect. And then I think it's also reaching out to members of SAC, whether that's people who are on the executive board or people who are just involved in saying, hey, you're involved in this leadership um, enterprise that's all about advocacy and building community and harnessing the power of student athletes, right? Democracy is inherently connected to that. And we want to make it easy and understandable for you to do that. What are the tools you need for us to do that? I think also making sure that you're very intentional with what kind of events you want to organize, making sure that they're nonpartisan so that SAC doesn't, you know, have that kind of conflict of interest where um, you want to make sure that you're being very objective in what you're doing. So, uh, for example, the voter registration, I'm not there to go talk about uh, what presidential candidate I personally want. I'm there to provide that information, uh, provide resources like all into vote.org um, to make sure that's ensure that it's nonpartisan, providing every resource I can to each student. And, and Kelsey, I just add, I think one other thing for staff to think about is that in the civic engagement world, there are these key moments or holidays. And sometimes it's an it's a nice way to organize like Coaches and teams understand a moment, right? We have games. We circle the date. We know we got a game on October 3rd, and we're preparing for that. So National Voter Registration Day, 
which usually, you know, mid-September gives you something to prepare for. Uh, National Voter Education Week coming up next week gives you a moment to kind of uh, organize around, vote early day, et cetera. So at the team, we also try to do that through the resources we can provide that are free and nonpartisan, um, like our October 8th call, uh, Zoom call. That's a moment where a SAC could come together, a department could come together. We're bringing free pizza to 122 watch parties to try to make that a fun, easy event. Like we'll bring the speakers, we'll bring the free pizza. If you all can help us bring the athletes to the table, that, that would be great, right? So kind of organizing around some of these key civic moments might make that a, a little bit of an easier lift versus you thinking that you have to create an event um, uh, on your own. Love that. Appreciate um, all the thoughts there. Uh, I think we got time for maybe one last question. And um, I want to circle back to the one that got asked in the Q&A for anybody on the call, Joe, Stephanie as well. Um, how do you explain the different parties that folks can register for in a nonpartisan way? Um, I don't know about you. I appreciate that all of you on the call are civically engaged. And I know I've been in some situations where my student athletes don't always either have the time or the bandwidth or the interest to say, oh, I need to register to vote and who should I vote for? So how do you approach that? Um, I'll pass it to any one of you. I'm happy to jump in just to provide some resources. And then of course, wanna allow space for our student athletes here to share if they've ever encountered such a situation and how they might have that conversation. I think Sammy, you alluded to it of like, I'm not here to tell you who to vote for on um, which presidential candidate, but I'm here to help you get the information to do so. Um, and I think that can be a scary thing. Like you don't want to be perceived as influencing anyone in either direction because everyone's trying to figure out who they are in college. And that's part of the experience. And to Inez's point, like it's a team sport. So let's figure out how to make democracy work. Um, a few resources that I'd recommend folks consider is there's some great stuff about at Senate.gov, which talks about the foundations of our political party. So if you're like, I'm not really sure where the Republican Party came from or the Democratic Party or the Libertarian or the working families, we can all do some historical research on like, how did these things come to be? Instead of just assuming um, my family is, always votes this direction, so I assume I should do the same. Um, I also encourage folks to think about like what all is on your ballot and like what categories of positions. So re state representatives versus legislators versus city councilors versus county clerks or judges, like a lot's on the ballot and they all have their own political identities. And so just making sure you don't make false information there. Um, so I put both our election 2024 and our researcher ballot tool in the chat, which folks can utilize, or in the Q&A, excuse me, which folks can utilize. And then lastly, there's some great research that came out of um, the Pew Research Center, which talks about like, does the two party political system work or not work and where are folks kind of aligning in different ways and what are the values that each of these parties kind of espouse to and it might look different than the false narrative if you're less familiar of the political research in the past so all of those are accessible documents um, all of those are there in a nonpartisan capacity again not swaying who or what but they might give you some additional foundational knowledge to support that conversation um, should your peers come and ask you like who should i vote for instead you can say here's some resources <laughs> to figure it out on your own too Wonderful. Yeah, so I think that's it. Oh, sorry. Oh, just go ahead, Joe. Is I think it's important to lead with being nonpartisan, right? That that's got to be part of every, you know the start start of those conversations is setting that uh, framing uh, immediately. I think is is really important as well. Amazing. We're right almost up at the hour, so we don't want to hold anyone else um, schedules too long. Thank you all so much for attending. Um, I want to give a special shout out to the student athletes who joined. You took time out of your busy schedules to come here and share your expertise and your experience with us as administrators. And a huge thank you to the team for sharing all your resources. Um, we've talked about so many resources here. Just know that we will send out follow-up information as well so that you can take a deeper dive into what the team has to offer. Also the All In To Vote campaign. And then um, there's resources there for you about the All Vote No Play. Um, so on behalf of the N4A and its leadership, thank you so much for our presenters. You've inspired us uh, to be both more engaged citizens and to help empower our student athletes to do the same. The virtual education team um, is really thankful that you all chose to came, come today. We would like to um, provide a recording of this that can be found on the YouTube channel. Um, and we will also send out a brief survey that will appear on your screen once the webinar has ended. So thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your week. We'll end it there. Um, and any feedback is is great. We would love to hear your thoughts and your experience. So uh, this concludes today's presentation.